Today, we're going to discuss training aid tactics. Specifically, we're going to go over how to use tennis balls to improve alignment. You've probably heard about how tennis balls can be used to improve propulsion. Today, we're going to discuss how to use tennis balls to improve alignment. So the issue. So a lot of swimmers are performing a lot of unnecessary sculling in the stroke. So there's side to side movement, there's up and down movement, there's all sorts of movement that isn't necessarily either setting up the stroke or creating propulsion. What's important, to under, what's important to understand is that these aren't necessarily just errors in pulling. In many cases, they're compensations for a lack of alignment, a lack of stability, or a lack of balance in the water. So because the body's not balanced, the hand has to brace in some way in order to create stability or in order to compensate for another action somewhere else in the body. Why does this matter? Well, simply, if the arms are working to create balance and they're moving in order to do so, that means they're not going to be creating as much propulsion as possible. And if they're not creating as much propulsion as possible, swimmers aren't going to be able to swim as fast as they otherwise could. The other issue is that the hands aren't particularly effective at creating stability. So instead of using the arms for something that they're good at, such as creating propulsion, they're using the arms for something that they're not particularly suited for, which is creating stability or balance. The other issue is that this is going to be extra work that's not necessary. If the athlete was balanced from the beginning, they wouldn't have to perform this movement at all. So it's an inefficient and ineffective strategy because it doesn't work as well as balancing through the body and it just creates extra energy usage that would otherwise be used to helping swimmers go fast. So what doesn't work? Well, simply telling them to stop doing it is not going to be particularly effective. You're treating the symptom rather than the cause. So if you don't address the root cause, the symptom's always going to keep creeping up. And these compensations are instinctive. Most swimmers aren't even aware that they're doing them. And more importantly, swimmers have to find balance in the water. And they're going to do that by whatever means necessary. And so if you tell them to stop using the arms to create balance, they're going to find it some other way. This is especially true if they're not fixing the root problem, which is balance through the torso. And even if instructions were effective, you're not going to be able to see all of the little compensations that are happening as a result of poor balance. Instead, you need to expose them. So what can we do instead? We can have swimmers swim with tennis balls in their hands and then have them perform training activities focused on improving alignment. Because the hands can no longer effectively compensate, swimmers are going to feel a lot more unstable in the water. And then with that awareness, they can figure out strategies for improving their alignment through their torso. They can learn to find stability in the water through better body position. Then if you ask for performance changes, it's going to put pressure on them to figure out solutions. And because they can't use the arms to stabilize, they're going to have to improve their ability to find balance and stability through the torso. So the key idea is that by putting tennis balls in the hands, swimmers can't use the arms to compensate and they have to find stability through the torso and they have to find balance through the body. So here's a set that shows you how to put it into practice. So one of the big issues with freestyle in particular is that the breathing really disrupts alignment and stability in the water. And so swimmers will often compensate by using the hands to find stability and balance. And in this set, we're going to take away the hands while working on the breathing and then put it together with regular freestyle. So we'll start off with paddle cap freestyle where there's a paddle on their head and then they have to breathe effectively with that, but they can't compensate with the hands because they're holding tennis balls. Then they'll move right into some freestyle and stroke count. So they have to be efficient with each stroke and they have to be efficient with their alignment. We're going to descend with tennis balls. We're going to descend without tennis balls. That way they get a feel for both. They have to find speed in alignment without the hands, and then they get to put it together with regular freestyle. They'll do that whole thing three rounds, and if you want for an extra challenge, you can have them try to descend faster each round through.